It's really difficult for me to describe how incredibly pleasant it feels to be back in Erbil after all this time. Can you believe that when I made those videos, it was October 2017 when I was last year. 2017! It's a long time, a lot's happened and it is absolutely glorious to be back again. Despite that amount of years, by the way, something I just checked, I went back to the, the old video that I made just to double check when it was to make sure I wasn't lying. And I was wearing the exact same t-shirt as I am now. And that's not deliberate, I promise. I'm not even sure if that's a good thing. It's sustainable, I suppose. But yeah, it turns out almost six years ago, I was wearing this exact thing. There you go. But yeah, since then, a lot of stuff has changed. Maybe not my uh, fashion sense, but a lot of other stuff has changed. Um, when I was last here, there was a flight ban. So you couldn't fly in or out of the Kurdish region. You couldn't even get to the federal area because of how difficult it was to get a visa. That's now a little bit easier. The civil situation really wasn't great in the country. That nowadays appears to have improved significantly. And for a bit of context, by the way, the last time I was here, Maplin and Toys R Us were still in business, if you can believe that. We had Theresa May as our prime minister. Obviously, we've been through a few of them since then. Kobe Bryant died, the Greg's vegan sausage roll came out, the Ever Given got stuck in the Suez Canal, Harvey Weinstein got convicted, Harry and Meghan got married and left the royal family, Covid happened, Matt Hancock snogged someone, the Notre Dame caught fire, Trump and Kim Jong-un became best pals. A lot's gone on, a lot's gone on. That's how long it's been. Right, I feel like I've significantly digressed here. So this is the uh, thoroughly wonderful Shanadar Park in Erbil. And it's a cracking starting point because it really displays how massive a difference there is between Erbil and Baghdad. As you know, I really enjoyed Baghdad, but this is such a different cultural experience, I think is one way to put it. It's big, it's open, it's green. You've got kids playing in the park. You've got cable cars, you've got tall buildings. It's not something you get in Baghdad. But I never really had that perspective last time. This is one of the first places that I really delved into in this part of the world. And I don't know if you remember, if you've ever seen those videos, but it was a really spontaneous trip. And I'm so grateful that I did it because it was here that I really started to understand that it's not really about what you read in the headlines or anything. It's just, you know, people everywhere are inherently good and it's no use really listening to what the news or the official government advice kind of is. You just turn up, have a look around for yourself, meet some people and you just get this thorough kind of understanding that the world isn't that bad at all. And for me, I credit most of that to this. I was quite an inexperienced traveller back then and this place is what made me, you know, kind of fall in love with the idea of going places that don't get the nicest rep and to uh, find out for myself. So that is why I credit this and I hold this place so dearly and it is fantastic to be back again. I mean, look at it. Isn't it all just absolutely wonderful? It's also just really nice to be back and see some of the other stuff that I didn't see last time, whether I just didn't come across it or it's quite newly built. But anyway, there's loads of these green open spaces that I didn't really explore last time I was here. I was more in the city centre. Um, this is another park, this is called Minara Park and again it's just quite a nice place to mooch about. They've got quite a few big fancy things but they've also got some miniatures like this minaret, the Mudhafaria minaret which actually is just over there in the distance. We'll go over there in a sec. We've also got this, which I think is a pretty safe bet to say this is a scaled down version of the Citadel of Erbil, which we did visit last time. And if you remember, I mentioned that this is the oldest continuously inhabited place on Earth, built 8,000 years ago and still got some people living there. So here it is in little form. On our way towards the aforementioned minaret. Look at this whole avenue of heads that unfortunately I know nothing about, but they're pretty cool anyway. This is also referred to as Choli Minaret, 
uh, was built nearly a thousand years ago. It was during the reign of Saladin, so about 1200 AD. It's 37 meters tall, so just over 100 feet of it left, and it is the remnants of what was once a mosque. Inside, there are two spiral staircases, so the people going up and the people going down can't see each other, interestingly. And uh, over there is a big statue of, well, some Donny, because I'm not actually sure who that is supposed to be. But he's there, and this could be his minaret. Got a whole group of these chaps on top of this roof for whatever reason. And then just down here, I've also got this kind of 3D mural thing. Pretty mint. Right, I'm not sure if this is actually closed or not. We're approaching the Sawaf Mosque. We could see this from uh, Shanadar Park earlier in the background. Uh, this is a closer up view of it. This is apparently the largest mosque in Erbil. And there's not much more I can tell you about it than that. But once again, pretty fine bit of work. All right, yeah, I don't think that that was supposed to be open. So let's just, let's just scurry on. Observations are, there seems to be quite a heavy focus on the environment. There's loads of murals everywhere about saving water, saving the planet, everything. A lot of them written in English as well, which is interesting. Um, and it is a million, billion, trillion times cleaner than anywhere in federal Iraq. So maybe that, maybe they kind of coincide with each other. But there's a few noticeable differences walking around. That is Mastora Ardalan, a Kurdish poet from the 1800s. And uh, this statue was unveiled on her 200th birthday. She died a long time ago, but what would have been her 200th birthday. I've also, for some reason, got Arman Gandhi over here. Not sure what the relationship is there, but he's here nonetheless. We're now heading further to the centre, so you may start recognising some places from the last videos. Here we go, here's the bit we remember from last time. We're back in the centre. There's our mate, the Citadel. I think when I was here before, I'd used the last of my money and there were no ATMs and I was a bit collapsed and I was looking around for these money boxes, trying to change some Turkish lira to get another hotel night. Ah, to be poor and young again. What a time, what a time it was to be alive. Even the air is the same. The nostalgia is indescribable. It actually feels like I was here about a week ago, not five, six years ago. I believe the last time I was making this ascent to the Citadel, I was reading off some information about the age of the Citadel itself, which 6,000 BC, so 8,000 years. I also mentioned that is about the same time that humans invented the wheel, so awfully old. I also went into some detail about how they even worked that out with the archaeological concept of a tell, which is the gradually increasing height of a mound over time. When civilizations pass through a place, they don't dig up the old foundations, they just build on top of it. And so the more and more people pass through, the higher a city gets. This one being pretty tall indicates it is indeed 8,000 years old, as well as some of the remains they found. Look at that behind me. Stunning. Um, it mostly looks exactly the same as I remember it. It seems to have kept pretty much in line with how it was before. Same cannot be said for my own physical form. I was out of breath when I last walked up here and I was a young, supple man back then. The last five or so years have been less kind to me than they have the Citadel of Erbil, I've got to say. And we've made it up, and I've got to say, it's an even nicer view than last time. What a place. It's definitely a bit busier than last time I was here, that's a good thing. They are mostly locals, I've still not seen any tourists yet, but I am told that more and more people are coming nowadays, so that is good. 
I believe last time I was walking past this giant Kurdish flag in the centre of the citadel, I was talking about how significant the claim is that it is the oldest continuously inhabited place on earth and how important the continuously bit is because normally everyone gets killed quite quickly with civilizations and they have to get rebuilt or they move somewhere else or whatever. So the fact that someone's always lived here is quite an incredible record. I wonder if the same family lives here or more families. I don't know, but I know last time there was a family of six living here. I wonder if they stayed, moved out, more people came. I don't know. They do seem to have a lot of places open now though to visit this citadel. Got the Gems Museum. They've also got this antiques place that is open. Last time nothing was really open in here, just kind of planning to be. And then as we pass through this enormous archway, come out to the other side of the uh, of the citadel. Clearly very very popular place for the locals it's not hard to see why usually they do have the fountains going the fountains of Shah park i believe they're called but they're being renovated or cleaned or something but anyway it's not too bad a view is it It is also a very cool place at night, Erbil. You've got the citadel kind of overlooking all of the center of the city. It is still quite a busy, lively place, by the way, Erbil. I know we spent a lot of time in the green bits of the city. Uh, maybe it looks quieter than it is. And that over there is Sawaf Mosque, the one we snuck into and then quickly back out of earlier on. This whole really old kind of circular, I don't know, old bit of the city just lights up, glows up into a kind of just one enormous, really old school, cool looking supermarket type contraption. Yeah, you can once again kind of buy pretty much whatever you want from this kind of place. And because it's in a circle shape, it just feels like it goes on forever. They've also got an awful lot of scran options. They do love a good sweet treat, the Kurds. So what is it like revisiting after this many years? Well, I've got to say in 2023, I'm very glad to learn that I've not been looking back on this experience with rose tinted glasses. It really is brilliant. It was mint then and it's ace now. It is now a little bit easier to get in and out of. It's a bit more accessible. So hopefully you're watching these or this video to try and get some information about coming and having a look for yourself. If so, I hope you found them insightful. And if there's some other details you need, then please just leave a comment and I'll try and be useful. I've had a cracking time. Hopefully you've enjoyed tagging along with me as well. I know videos these days are few and far between, but it's nice to get back on the horse now and again. However, my four day impromptu short but fantastic stint in federal Iraq and Iraqi Kurdistan is now coming to an end. I've got a flight to catch home from Erbil in Iraqi Kurdistan. I could not have said that five or six years ago when there was a flight ban because of civil disruptions and arguments and stuff. So that is good news. It has been a pleasure, a rare pleasure admittedly nowadays, but a pleasure nonetheless to share the adventure with you lot. Maybe, just maybe, We'll do it again sometime. I'm off. Cheers, chaps. See you in a bit.